Okay, we're ready. So whenever you are ready, you can begin. Thank you. Hi, my name is Guillermo uh, Ruiz Arguelles. I am one of the four physicians in charge of the HSCT program uh, in Mexico. As you know, it's uh, myself, Dr. Gomez Armaguer, Dr. Ruiz Delgado, and Dr. Gomez uh, de Leon. On behalf of HSCT Mexico, we thank HSCT Warriors for the invitation to share with all of you uh, our experience and our day. These are the salient features of our program of HSCT for multiple sclerosis in Mexico. We use laboratory risk for all the laboratory workup. Pharmacentro provides medication. Blood bank is in charge of apheresis, transfusions, and so on. Dr. Gomez Almaguer and myself conduct the HSCT and are in charge of consultation, visits, and also supervise the nurses. We also employ a surgeon and an anesthesiologist for the placement of the catheter. Uh, we use also a hospital for ambulatory procedure for catheter placing, uh, chemotherapy, spirometry, electrocardiogram, uh, consultation with a cardiologist, neurologist, transportation, driver and translator, lodging for patients and carrier, food for patients and carrier. And we calculate that the number of employees involved in our program is around 500. The space that we have devoted for the HSCT program is around 8,000 square, uh, square meters. Patients remain in our premises for 28 days. And there are two campuses, one in Puebla and one in Monterrey for our program. Some of the uh, salient uh, features of the uh, campus uh, in Puebla, the medical offices, the uh, rooms to see the patients, the apheresis, uh, room and also the chemotherapy room. Uh, additional uh, pictures of our facilities. Uh, we have a uh, meeting room, the waiting room, uh, consulting uh, room, and also uh, we have um, a garden for the uh, carers during the procedure. Uh, we also have a lodging for the patients. We have some uh, features. Uh, every apartment has two rooms one for the carrier and one for the, for the patient. And uh, we even have a, a roof garden to uh, take some sun uh, since most of the patients came from cold places. Uh, faci medical facilities in Monterrey, the chemo room, uh, meaning a room. This is uh, also the uh, chemotherapy room. And also the lodging facilities in Monterrey, as you can see, uh, they're very uh, well displayed. This is Dr. Gomez Almaguer and, and myself. And uh, additional pictures of the lodging facilities uh, in Monterrey. Uh, transportation is also uh, considered. It is adapted for wheelchairs. Uh, we transport from and to airports in Mexico and Monterrey. Transport the patient from the lodging uh, to the clinic and city transportation is provided if needed. Very recently, we started a collaborative program with the National Institute of Neurology and Neurosurgery. And they are now, this is a, a government uh, institution, and they are now sending patients to be treated uh, at clinical risk. These are the first two patients that we wrapped, the, both of them with HACT. And we are proud uh, to be part now of the uh, places uh, in which the government can send uh, uh, selected patients. In addition to grafting patients, both Dr. Gomez Almaguer and myself are very interested in participating in academic activities. We have uh, gone to uh, very many meetings to present our data. Uh, some of them have been presented as posters and some of them have been presented as uh, oral presentations. Uh, we are a private HCT treatment center. Uh, and both Dr. Gomez Almaguer and myself have conducted more than 3,000 HACT procedures during more than 20 years for hematological and neuroimmune conditions. Uh, our renowned team of experts provides personalized comprehensive care uh, that helps patients manage their symptoms and maximize their quality of life at all stages in their condition. Salient features of the uh, curriculum vitae of both uh, 
eh, Professor Gomez Almaguer eh, and uh, myself. Uh, I was trained in San Luis Potosí, and later on, uh, I spent some time at the Mayo Clinic uh, uh, in Rochester. And uh, I was elected a distinguished alumnus of the Mayo Clinic and also master of the American College of Physicians. And probably this uh, honorary degree, Doctor Honoris Causa by the University of Autonoma de San Luis Potosí, is one of the uh, salient achievements in my academic career. Professor Gomez Almaguer was trained in Monterrey. She also trained in the same uh, hospital as I trained uh, in Mexico City. He's uh, currently the head of the hematology service at the University Hospital in Monterrey, and currently the chair of council uh, of the International Society of Hematology. We have been involved in uh, very many uh, papers, uh, as well as Dr. Ruiz Delgado. Uh, he was a postdoctoral fellow at the Mayo Clinic. He is currently the deputy director of research and education in Clinica Ruiz, and also in Centro de Hematología y Medicina Interna. And he's a member of several uh, societies, such as the American Society of Hematology, International Society of Hematology, and so on. He has also an extensive uh, activity of uh, paper publishing, as well as Dr. Andres Gomez de Leon. He was trained uh, in Hospital de Nutrición in Mexico City and later run in Hospital Universitario Dr. José Lotero González in Monterrey, Mexico. These are the same features of our HSCP method. We conduct the uh, transplant or an outpatient setting. This avoids hospitalization and reduces substantially the risk of uh, nosocomial infections. This is an outpatient treatment that helps also to avoid COVID-19. Uh, we use the uh, four doses uh, in two blocks apart uh, of, the, of the chemotherapy, specifically of cyclophosphamide. This results in, in a reduced renal damage reduce bone marrow damage and reaches the same level of immunosuppression. We employ non cryopreserved preserved cells. We never freeze the cells. This results in improved viability, reduces manipulation and reduces contamination. Our procedure is very safe. We have had two fatalities in 951 patients. And uh, we have treated uh, uh, since the uh, pandemia since February 2020, 102 patients we have grafted. We were able to detect COVID-19 in two out of these 100 uh, patients, and we had to cancel the transplant and to postpone it until the infection is cleared. Um, we have successfully uh, transplanted in the COVID-19 era, 100 patients uh, with a hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Uh, we are not required to have the SARS-CoV-2 PCR test done prior to coming to our premises. Uh, and uh, every patient and caregiver will be tested uh, uh, on, uh, upon their arrival into our facilities. Most patients uh, can be uh, grafted with only one aphoristic procedure, 90%. Most complications are handled as health patients. The chances of going to the hospital uh, using a gourmet is these are around 4%. Uh, there is a very low transfusion requirement. 10% of patients require red blood cells of, 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 uh, or platelets. And we have shown that uh, a practical type of multiple sclerosis, even the progressive uh, forms of multiple sclerosis, respond to our HSP. I will elaborate more uh, about this particular point uh, later on. We accept patients with an EDS score up to eight points. And as I said, we use cyclophosphamide in two different blocks apart, and uh, we employ higher doses that we talked about as compared to other uh, protocols conducted in other parts of the world. There is no visa requirement to come to Mexico, and we also include uh, low doses uh, of steroids. This figure uh, here depicts the transplant that we started doing uh, in 1993 and uh, up to 2020, this is in clinical risk. Most uh, transplants are autologous and we have also conducted uh, allogeneic uh, transplant. We are currently the largest center doing transplants in the country, including uh, the governmental institutions. The indications of allogeneic transplant are mainly acute leukemia, whereas the main indication of autologous transplant 
is uh, multiple sclerosis. The male, uh, the female to male uh, ratio is two to one, as in most uh, series of patients with multiple, uh, multiple sclerosis. And this is the place of origin of the patient that we have grafted. Most patients, 44%, have come from the United States, 23% uh, from the United Kingdom. We have also patients from Norway, Canada, Australia, and some others. Uh, and our current figure is 951 patients, which represents 100%. This is the places uh, uh, for the patients have uh, come from, the United States, Alaska, which is part of the United States, and the United Kingdom. Uh, also, uh, Canada uh, and some other parts of the world. Uh, in addition to uh, conducting the transplant, we have been interested in presenting our data worldwide. We presented our data in meetings of the International Society of Hematology, American Society of Hematology, the B. Broadmoor Presentation Tandem Meetings, uh, American Society of Hematology several times, as well as Tandem Meetings, and now uh, this uh, American site of one world transplantation has changed the name, and now the name of the meeting is Transplantation and, and Cellular Therapy Meeting. Uh, our most recent presentation was done in Florida in February this year, prior to the pandemic. This is the poster that we presented in the meeting of the American Society of Hematology in December 2019, and I will elaborate a little more, more about the results, but we presented uh, the data in this particular paper of 739 patients. Our numbers are now uh, 951, as I already showed you. We have been interested in doing uh, uh, publication. This is an initial publication, which is a feasibility study. The question here is, can this be done on outpatient patients uh, using non chronic preserved cells? The answer is yes. This uh, uh, paper deals with the renal damage in patients with multiple sclerosis and indicates that by uh, uh, splitting the doses of cyclophosphamide, we are able to uh, damage uh, less uh, uh, the kidneys of the patient with the disease. This editorial uh, here refers to the uh, usefulness of the current treatments of multiple sclerosis. Drugs produce a response of at most in 50% of patients, whereas most transplant programs are around 80% response. This indicates that nowadays the best therapeutic option for patients with multiple sclerosis is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This other paper, January 2019, uh, analyzes the safety of the procedure. <laughs> conducted on outpatient uh, basis and employing non frozen graft in persons with multiple sclerosis. The conclusion of, of that paper is yes, the procedure is safe, and in our hands, only two fatalities out of 951 patients have uh, been shown. This paper, published uh, this year, uh, uh, some months ago, uh, deals with the changes in the standard disability scale score. In patients with multiple sclerosis, this analysis 617 consecutive patients with multiple sclerosis that were grafted in our center. And I will show you some of the results of the response to the treatment as far as the neurological condition is con con uh, concerned. 951 patients, we have hospitalized 40 of them, only two have uh, had uh, uh, fatalities. and as you can see, the efficacy, which is defined by the uh, addition of improved conditions to stabilized conditions, are around 80% a long time. You can see that all type of multiple sclerosis do have some response. The better response is uh, uh, being observed in relapsing remission. This is the changes uh, at 12 months of patients with relapsing remission multiple sclerosis. This line here, the big patients who stabilize the condition, and these uh, patients are uh, those that uh, drop uh, the EDSS score um, uh, up to six points. So adding stabilization to response, we get an 85% response rate for patients with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. 
In primary progressive multiple sclerosis, 25% of patients do not respond, and the response rate is 75%. Whereas in secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, the response rate is around 79%. Again, as time goes by from 12 to 18 months, the response rate uh, is uh, uh, improved. This is the green uh, bars here are the patients that do respond and the response rate uh, from 75% to 83% in primary progressive, secondary progressive, and also relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. So this indicates that uh, less than 20% of patients do not have a response to uh, our procedure. As a result of the changes that we have done to the stem cell transplantation procedures, the Center for International Blood and Marrow Transplant Research granted us, both David Gomez and Maguire and myself, this Distinguished Service uh, Award. It was delivered by Dr. Paul Martin, uh, who was by then the uh, president of the Center for International Blood and Marrow Transplant Research. Very recently, some months ago, we organized uh, in Puebla uh, uh, Hematopoietic Stem Cell Transplantation Forum, and uh, we had a chance to have here uh, Professor Gomez Armaguer uh, from our uh, program, Dr. Richard Bird, who is very well known uh, for his contributions to the uh, HSET programs uh, in multiple sclerosis. I also had a chance to uh, have some lectures, and it was an interesting experience in, que in which Dr. Gomez Almaguer, uh, Professor Bird, and myself uh, had a chance to interchange some ideas. Now, we are aware of the fact that there are some other HSCT facilities in the world. In the United States, Germany, Sweden, Russia, United Kingdom, Malaysia, Italy, Singapore, Belgium, Brazil, Israel, India, and Spain. And uh, we congratulate every center for offering uh, the best treatment option for multiple sclerosis up to now. And we also recognize the fact that there may be differences in the protocol, but we all have the same goal, which is helping patients. Now, this is the last presentation, uh, the, the last uh, slide of my presentation. And uh, I am uh, proud to be part of this effort to help patients with multiple sclerosis in our facility. Thank you for your attention. Brilliant. Thank you so much.